hold him up. No, me. Right. He didn't catch him. What is going on here? Oh, dear, it seems we spilt some milk. Obviously. But we don't cry about spilt milk in this house, because tomorrow the cow knows that... But what was all that about catching someone and then gobbling him up? We were just playing a little game. We were making believe that Mother Sam was a monster, and my hand was a little boy, and the monster was trying to catch a little boy, and if we caught him, it was going to carry him off and... Fetch James! Control yourself, boy. So, in spite of anything I may say to the contrary, these fantasies keep going right on, huh? Make believe, make believe from morning till night. If there aren't Indians in the backyard or things in the night, you're actually pretending to understand what the birds say. Well, it isn't common sense, it's not rational, and by the Lord Harry, I intend to put a stop to it. But it's harmless fun. Harmless, it is not harmless. In this year of 1903, all we have to cling to is common sense. Common sense. That's what's going to save us, if anything can. I swear I don't know what the world's coming to. Even the government's gone mad. Do you know what those politicians in Washington spent last year? No, dear. $541,000. More than half a million thrown away in 1902 just to run the government. And that's not all. Now, what do you suppose, hmm? Flying machines. Don't contradict me. Last Thursday, two young lunatics by the name of Wright, I think, yes. The Wright brothers. They took this contraption they put together and they flew. And now, what do you suppose this article says? In a few years, we'll all be flying. There's a real fantasy for you. Why? Up in the clouds with the birds. That will do, young man. It's high time both you and your sister stopped all this dreaming and got some good old-fashioned horse sense. And that reminds me, Mother, about that Santa Claus business. James! What about Santa Claus, Mother? Nothing, darling. It's time you children were playing in the snow. Yes, Mother. James, you promised. I said I'd think it over. Well, I have thought it over, and I'm not going to get dressed up in any red suit with a long white beard. But, James, they'll be heartbroken. Why? Why should they have to believe in one more fantasy? They'll be their presents as usual. The difference is, this year, they'll know they came from you and me. But, James, if you love them... I do love them, and I intend to do my duty by them. They're going to be brought up in a world of reality. And I must say, my dear, that your attitude is very confusing. You actually encourage them to live in this dream world of theirs. Time you'd grow up too by George. I wish I could stay here all day and play in the snow with you. What did Father mean about Santa Claus? Oh, nothing, darling. He was probably thinking about flying machines and how Santa drives his reindeer. I don't think that's what he was thinking at all. Look, why don't you two build a snowman? When I was little, we used to build the most beautiful snowmen, big as real people. And when we were all finished, we would pretend that... You used to pretend, too, didn't you, Mother? Go build your snowman. You know, I'll bet Father didn't pretend when he was a little boy. Do you mean Father was a little boy once? Of course. But years and years ago... There he is, the best snowman in the world. Well, he ought to be. You've taken all day. He's worth it. He's perfect. You know what? I'm going to give him a heart. Everybody has to have a heart. How can you possibly make a heart? Got one right down here if I can get down to it. Your own heart? Silly. There. Oh, that. Well, it's a heart, isn't it? Gee, I gave him two left feet. He's got a heart like everybody else, only it's a heart of gold. And people with hearts of gold must be very, very nice. So when we ask them to do tricks for us and... Fitz! He's alive! Violet, you know what Father said. We're not to pretend such things. Then such things better not nod their heads at us. Father says it's time for us to stop dreaming and grow up. Alive. Just what I was thinking myself. Yes, I am alive, by Jiminy. Oh, that should be fun for all of us. Yeah. Oh, these eyes. Oh, conventional, I grant you, but do you mind if I make a little alteration? 
little bit off here, a little bit off there. Ah. That's better. How do you do? How do you do? Oh. Fine job of work you two have done here. Yes. I told you he'd do tricks for us. Tricks? Good gracious, yes. <laughs> Oh! What's the matter? I don't think I did it. Oh, well then, we'll have to do something about that. Hmm. Now, here's another little trick for you. Oh, please wait till I get my... Mother, I'll have to see you. Please wait. How do you do? It's charming to know you. Madame, this is a great honor. I wasn't precisely prepared to meet grown-ups, you know. No, grown-ups can be very difficult at times, but... But this young lady assured me that you are fun. That you won't mind a bit. Why should I mind? Well, why, indeed. <laughs> I'm quite harmless, you know. Yeah. But you're not... Real? What's real? Real today and gone tomorrow, I always say. Uh, yeah. Oh, but my dear lady, you must be cold out here without your wraps. We can't all be snowmen, you know. Now, why don't you go inside the house? Let's all go in. What, me too? Of course. What's rude of me. Please come in. Oh, this is most kind of you, dear lady. Most kind. Not that I mind the cold, you know. No, no, no. The cold shoulder, yes. The cold and fishy eye, yes. But a fine, freezing winter's day. Oh, no, no, no. Delicious. <laughs> Actually, I'd never been inside a house, you know. No, you know how it is. A snowman ought to know his place, some people say. And I must confess, I've always been curious. It's quite simple when you understand it. It has to do with seeing and believing, which are all mixed up together, and with love and with happiness. Now, a happy moment lasts forever. <laughs> For instance, there is the moment when young James Lindsay came a-courting. That's a happy moment to have around, isn't it? It was spring, of course. Uh... Oh, and here is James Lindsay. Such a nice young man. Are those for me, James? Calls to Newcastle, Miss Ellen. It's almost foolish to give you flowers because you're so like a flower yourself. Why, that's quite like poetry. I had no idea. I wish I were a poet, Miss Ellen. And I might be able to say the things I want to say. How can I tell you what I mean? Day after day, I dream of you. I picture you as my wife, Miss Ellen. I picture myself always near you to protect you and give you the tenderness and understanding that you're right. Miss Ellen, I love you. Will you please marry me? Yes, Jane. Do you think it wise or kind to bring back things that have been destroyed? Destroyed? Nothing you love can be destroyed. No. What you cherish and believe in, and what you love, these things and these people are all there somewhere, if only you know how to find them. Oh, I hate snow. No accounting for tastes. Bills, bills, bills. Mother didn't even look at the snowman. Fitz, dear. Mm. I have the oddest feeling. Father, Father, we finished the snowman and he's alive and he's in the parlor. A snowman in the parlor, huh? Will you please ask your mother to step in here? At once. Yes, sir. Do you mind if I put the hat away now? It's Father's and he's not in a very good mood. Oh, not a bit. I have a feeling I won't be needing it much longer. Well, here today and gone tomorrow, I always say. Now then, in spite of everything I've said, this make-believe is still going on. Is it only make-believe? You know perfectly well it is, and I want it stopped. Violet said this morning that she wondered if you had ever been a little boy. I'm not so sure myself. Have you forgotten what it's like to be a child, always surrounded by grown-ups, telling you to do this and this and... Forbidding you to do that and that. 
all the unkindnesses, the bitter disappointment, the unfairness. I am always scrupulously fair. I simply want them to face facts. Do you ever stop to think of the facts that a child has to face? Well, he starts facing them when he leaves the cradle. Do you blame him if he takes them slowly? When he doesn't like who he is or where he is, there's always make-believe to take him out of it. I've never cared for make-believe. Haven't you? There was a young man once who brought me flowers. Do you know what he said? He said, I picture you as my wife. I picture myself always near you. You see, he was making believe, too. He said, I picture myself always near you. I give you tenderness and understanding. I wonder what ever happened to that young man. What's the matter with you? Oh, you're melting. Melt? Oh, no. Not I. The snow is melting, I agree. The very handsome image you built for me is melting, but not I. You can destroy snow, wood, flesh and blood, but I'm made of something much more durable. I am something you thought of. And that nobody can take away from you. Let the snow melt. But I'll be around and about. You can be certain of that. <laughs> Perhaps once in a while, I'll give you a secret sign we'll keep to ourselves. <laughs> Perhaps I'll whistle like this. And when you hear that, you'll know I'm there, even if you don't see me. Well, I'm off now. Can't thank you enough. It's been fun. Bye. Suppose we just call it childish imagination. Not that I approve, of course. I don't think it'll do any harm if they don't take it too seriously. Thank you, James. James. What is it, dear? Um, there's something I ought to tell you. I saw a snowman in there, too. <laughs> oh, really, dear? <laughs> well, now, children. Have you been having a good time? Yes, Father. That's good. By the Lord Harry, you must have tracked in half the snow in the neighborhood. It's all melting in one great puddle. Well, Violet, look here. You've got your little heart locket. And ladies must be more careful about their hearts. Look at the girls, darling. Here we go. Now you've got your heart back, and you'll be more careful with it in the future, won't you? Come now. Let's have some Christmas cheer for Christmas time. What would Santa Claus say? While wager he's up at the North Pole this very minute, loading his sleigh and grooming his reindeer and getting all ready to pay us a visit. Thank you, James. <laughs>